Good morning, everybody. Once again, Dr. Salim is here with you guys. Uh, let's talk about a few more questions regarding this registry exam of the ARDMS, American Registry for Diagnostic Medical Sonography, especially the topic of SPI, sonographic principles and instrumentation. Let me share the screen with you guys and talk about a few questions uh, which will help us on the ARDMS examination. Okay, so here is the question. There are the questions. Let's see this. Simple and easy. If the diameter of transducer is two millimeter, calculate the diameter of the beam at NZL1 or near zone, uh, near zone length one. So what do you think? Is it one millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeter, four millimeter or five millimeter? Which one is the correct answer? Yes, because it has to be the formula and the formula is beam diameter of, uh, the beam diameter is equal to the, half of the diameter of the transducer. So the transducer is two millimeter, and then in NZL1, that has to be half of that. So half of that is one milli. A is the correct answer. Good job. Let's do the next one. It says, from the fixed focusing transducers, those transducers who have fixed focusing, which, of, uh, which one is the most common among them? So it says internal fixed focusing, external fixed focusing, both of them are the most common, none of them are common. What do you think? Very simple and easy question. Exactly, internal fixed focusing is the most common. What is the difference between internal fixed focusing and internal? So in internal fixed focusing, the PZT, the crystal itself, it is like in a curve shape. And uh, with the external fixed focusing, they place another um, lens in front of the PZT, which is already a curved uh, lens. So that's an extra thing they put inside of the transducer. So keep in mind, A is the correct answer. Oh yeah, next question. What type of beam diameter is achieved beyond the focal zone? Like what type of beam uh, you will have after focal point, like deeper to that, what do you think? Narrow, wider, not changing, narrowest, none of the above. Exactly B is the correct answer. Wider because the sound beam will converge to a point which is the focal point. And after that, it will diverge. It will be more wider till the more depth. So that will keep going and will be wider and wider. Good one. Now let's do this question. Easy, simple question. If the focus of a beam moved closer to the transducer, like come more superficial. Means if you bring the focal point more shallow, what happened to the near zone length one, NZL1, what happened? What changes come to the NZL1? It become shorter, it become longer, it stay the same, not changing or all of the above. Very easy question. Exactly, it will become shorter because when you bring the focal point more shallow, more closer, and then the NZL will become shorter, shorter, and shorter. That is correct answer. Okay, next question. The next question is asking, what changes will be seen at beam diameter if we added multiple focus? For example, normal imaging, we have one focal point um, for any of our 2D imaging. But if you increase the number of focal pointed, what happened to the beam diameter? Is it get wider? Is it get narrow? No changes will happen with the focal point or sometimes it get wider, sometimes it become narrow or not of the above, have no relationship. What do you think? Exactly, the more focal point you add to the, to the beam, it will become narrow and narrow. That's how it will make that beam more narrow. The right answer. Let's do the next question. So the next question is, which resolution get improved with multiple focus or we can say sound beam? If you add, like just previously we said, if you add more focal point to the sound beam, which, I mean, something will get improved or, or maybe not, but what changes do you see? Is it temporal resolution will get improved? Is it axial resolution? Is it lateral resolution? Is it contrast resolution? Or is it elevation or is it? One resolution will get a lot improved. And that's how we have a better image quality. So what do you think, which one will improve with multiple focal point to be added to that um, picturing? Exactly, lateral resolution. 
because lateral resolution determined by the beam diameter. So the narrower the beam diameter, the better the lateral resolution. Exactly correct answer. Next. The term used in ultrasound to define the ability to image accurately is called. This is a definition. So what do you think? This question is actually a definition. It goes to which of the following? Like it's the definition for which of the following option? Is it sound beam? Is it compression? Is it reflection? Is it resolution? Is it digitization? Which one is more better suitable for this definition? What do you think? Uh -huh. Yes. D is the correct answer. Resolution. So anything we image, we take pictures more accurately, more um, accurately, uh, which is really we can say match to the anatomy. So that is actually called resolution. It's a common definition for resolution. We're not talking which resolution, but it's just a common definition for the resolution. That is correct. Let's do the next question. And diagnostic ultrasound or sonography. Which of the following are aspects for detailed resolution? Like which of the following are the part of the detailed resolution? Let's make it more easier. Is it axial resolution? Is it elevational resolution? Is it lateral resolution? Is it all of them? What do you think? Exactly. Detailed resolution is all those, these three. Axial resolution, elevational resolution, and lateral resolution. Together, it's called detailed resolution. So D is the correct answer. Good job. Let's do the next one. Okay. The question is, which of the following is the most common units for axial resolution? Like, Everything have a unit, correct? Otherwise, if it's a percentage, that's a unit list, or if it's a digit, a number, that's a unit list. But the rest, everything, they should have a unit. Now, for the axial resolution, what are the units that most common we are talking? Is it millimeter, centimeter, microseconds, hertz, or rails? What do you think, which one is the correct option? Yes, I'm also agree with you. The most common is millimeter. Centimeter is also a unit, but the question clearly telling you that most common unit. So the most common is millimeter, correct? If you have this question in the ARDMS SPI examination, so keep in mind, if you have centimeter and millimeter, in that case, you have to select millimeter. But if they give you another option that says like A is B is the correct, then A is B, then that other option which says that A and B is the correct, then that one is the correct because both of them are. Okay, so let's do the next. It says axial resolution determined by what? Like it has to be determined by something, right? So axial resolution determined by the beam diameter, uh, special puzzle length or SPL, probe footprint, apodization, or all of the above. What do you think? Which one is the correct answer for this question? Yes, B is the correct answer. That is SPL or special pulse length. How much is the length of that one pulse? Like, is it that will be determining that this is a good exit resolution or this is a bad exit resolution? So, degraded or improved exit resolution will be determined by the SPL, special puzzle length. That is correct. Okay, next question. The next question is while evaluating axial resolution, what is the relationship between the main axis beam and structures to be scanned or reflectors? So what do you think, what is the relationship while you're just studying axial resolution? So main axis beam and the reflectors have what type of relationship? Is it perpendicular to each other? Are they oblique to each other? Are they parallel to each other? Either there is no relationship between them or they are side to side. What do you think? Well, keep in mind, the question is asking axial resolution study while you do the evaluation or study of the axial resolution. So what's the relationship of the main axis beam? Exactly, they are parallel to each other because the sound goes like that way and the structures are front and back to each other. So they have parallel relationship, that is correct. Let's do the next question. Okay, so this question is saying that short pulses will improve which of the following resolution? So keep in mind, there are a few options, but choose the best answer. Is it axial resolution, lateral resolution, elevational resolution, contrast resolution, or all of the above? What do you think? When the pulse 
is very short. Like SPL is very short, short, small, small SPL. What do you think? Exactly. It will be axial resolution. That is absolutely true. Because remember, we said that the axial resolution determined by SPL, special pulse length. So they go by the pulses. Is it a short pulse or is it a longer pulse? So the shorter the pulse, the better the axial resolution. Correct answer. Let us do the next one. Axial resolution as known as which of the following? Uh, sorry, axial resolution as known as all of the following, except it means axial resolution have all of the names, but there is one name which not goes to the axial resolution. So it's a longitudinal, depth resolution, range resolution, azimuth resolution, radial resolution. So what do you think? There is one option which is not as known as axial resolution. Yes, D is the correct answer because azimuthal resolution is not axial resolution. That is actually as known as lateral resolution. So azimuthal D, correct. The rest, all of them are as known as axial resolution. There are other names for them. Okay, in diagnostic ultrasound, we find the numerical value for axial resolution to be typically between what? Like there is a range to know the axial resolution, like how much distance can be catched by the axial resolution, by the SPL. So which are the ranges? Tell me. Is it from one millimeter to 10 millimeter? Is it from 0 0.1 millimeter to one millimeter? Is it from 10 millimeter to 100 millimeter? Is it from 0 0.01 millimeter to 0 0.1 millimeter? What do you think which one is the best answer to be chosen? Yes, I agree with you. B is the correct answer from 0 0.1 millimeter to 1.0 millimeter. That is the correct answer, absolutely correct. Okay, next question. It says, calculate axial resolution for a transducer which is 10 megahertz with the SPL of six millimeter. Okay, it's a little tricky question. Now you should know the formula for the axial resolution to be calculated this. So if you know the calculation for, or the formula for the axial resolution, how to calculate, then it's a lot easy question. If you don't know, I think that will be the toughest question in the world. Okay, so what do you think? Which one is the correct answer? 60 millimeter, 10 millimeter, six millimeter, 1.6, six millimeter, three millimeter. Which one is the correct answer? Yes, exactly. The formula for the axial resolution is SPL divided by two. So SPL is six millimeter divided by two, and that's a three millimeter is the correct answer. Absolutely correct. Okay. Now, this question is saying that high frequency transducers will produce what type of SPL? Like we have two type of frequencies, correct? Operating frequency transducer, we have two type of transducer. One, high frequency transducer, other one, low frequency transducer. So regarding to their operating frequency, the transducers are these two types. Now, tell me that if we have a high frequency transducer, what type of SPL they will have? Is it a longer SPL? Is it more cycles in the SPL? Is it a shorter SPL? Is it, is it a high and low frequency have the same SPL or none of the above? Which one is the best option? What do you think? Exactly, exactly. The higher the frequency, the shorter the SPL. If we have very high frequency, the SPL will getting shorter, 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 and shorter for both, for the number of cycles, and also they will be squeezed, very squeezed, so they will have a very little millimeter, so we have a shorter SPL. Correct, C is the correct answer, okay. Now, next question. All of the following are the options for better axial resolution, except. I mean, we just mentioned everything. This question should be a very easy question. So, low frequency transducer, uh, less number of the cycles in a pulse, a shorter pulse duration or PD, shorter SPL, high frequency. That is a very easy question. Please, everybody should correct this answer. What do you think? All of them? are for better axial resolution. There is one option which is not for better axial resolution. That's actually degrading the axial resolution. Which one is that? Yes, is the correct answer. Low frequency. Low frequency, is, there is the axial resolution is worse, degraded, and a low frequency. And the reason is 
for low frequency transducer, SPL is longer actually. We want shorter SPL to have a better exit resolution. Correct answer. Let's do three more questions. Okay. So it says in large resolution, what is the relationship between main axis beam and structures or reflectors. Okay, keep in mind, earlier we had a question similar, but that was for exit resolution. Now we are looking for the lateral resolution. So what do you think? Are they perpendicular to each other? The main axis beam and structures? Are they parallel to each other? Are they oblique to each other? There's no relationship or they're front and back. What do you think? Yes, is the correct answer. They're perpendicular to each other because structures are side to side and beam is coming perpendicular, 90 degree to them. So A is the correct answer. Ah, good job. Next question. So this question is asking that, what is the relationship? Let me do this. Okay, what is the relationship between structures and lateral resolution? <laughs> I just mentioned that. Are they front and back to each other? Side to side, parallel, all of the above or none of the above? Like the question is basically asking you that what is the relationship between the structures itself, not with the main axis beam? Just we did that, that was perpendicular, but here they're asking the, what is the relationship in a study of lateral resolution at the structure itself? What's the relationship between the structures? So exactly, B is the correct answer, side to side. They are side to side. The sound is coming perpendicular to them, correct? Okay, last question. Uh, let's see what it says. Lateral resolution determined by which of the following? Now, this question, I think I mentioned that too, but let's see who, who is catching quickly. Is it special pulse length, SPL? Is it beam diameter? Is it frequency of the transducer? Is it number of cycles in, uh, in a pulse? Is it none of the above? What do you think, which one is the correct answer for this? The lateral resolution, keep in mind, determined by what? Remember, the lateral axial resolution was determined by SPL. So one thing is out, correct? A is out, so it means A is not the correct answer. None of them is also out, that's not uh, the correct answer. So it is the beam diameter. The narrow the beam diameter, the better the lateral resolution. The wider the beam diameter, the degraded or bad or worse lateral resolution. Absolutely correct. Okay, my dear uh, healthcare providers. So once again, please don't forget to subscribe the channel and also share the channel with other uh, healthcare providers, especially those who are working in this field. Uh, of the radiology, especially they do their diagnosis on the imaging uh, sonography. So let them to have a notification if they subscribe to the channel, they will have upcoming more notifications because we are working on um, uh, vascular studies also for the RVT, RVS examination. We are working for um, echocardiography, RVCS, RCS examination also. That's also coming. We're working on a general abdomen, OBG van. We're working in, in everything. So uh, they are coming. So subscribe to the channel to get those notifications as well. Take care and have a nice day.